Hello and welcome! I am Enigmius and this is episode 20. The ultimate Feed the Beast Reloaded today. What the hell is going on? All of our plans almost, almost shot to hell by one technical glitch. The original plan for the Mega Turtle was to do what I had done with the previous Mega Turtles, which is make them mine with the force field equipped with a block cutter upgrade and it was actually going to be easier to manage the um, collection of the materials so I thought because the most recent version of modular force field system instead of just dropping the blocks on the ground it actually funnels them through the projector so that you could just put a, a relay or a, a chest or something adjacent to them and you don't have to worry about transposers or anything like that it was going to be so slick and convenient that the most difficult part of the build was going to be Getting the motor set up, which we almost did in the last episode, you might recall. We uh, looked at all this stuff, all the little different bits and pieces for the horizontal two-axis movement. And I promise you all we had to do was add the vertical modules, which would be so, so simple in comparison. And I didn't lie. Here we go, down here. We're going to look at this and then we're going to talk about force fields and how they don't move on frames. Assholes. It, you know, it could be a simple oversight. Um, it is two different mods that we're trying to get to cooperate. Uh, I'm not necessarily blaming anyone, but it almost scuttled the entire project. But horizontal modules. And I mean, we're talking about a motor unit that we're not concerned about being compact. Now, I'm going to be reworking this entire setup, the twin chunk loader drive to get it as compact as we can for the next iteration but for this one not really that big of a deal so you start with like a 4x3 section with just regular support frames don't have to have any kind of tube frames in there knock out one of the frames right here and you come over here you're gonna put some panels on the inside there and on the top and on the bottom another panel here and two covers right really simple so far nothing that is going to uh, cause anyone to scratch their heads. And you take your motors and you have one motor just stuck directly to the frame and another one below it and there's the hole that we knocked out of the 3x4 frame. You want one motor with the drive face right here facing to the left as we're looking at it. Same with this one. This one is pointing down and this one is pointing up. We've got two pieces of the jacketed blue alloy cable and they've got two more motors. This time, actually, we can swing right around. Oh, no, we can't see it because there's covers there. The drive face is actually touching the covers. You can see, basically, the top is touching the covers. This one is facing up, and this one is facing down. And then all you have to do is put two wireless receivers, one for each motor, the down motor and the up motor. And I chose, in this case, like everything else, to use a wireless receiver for the solid redstone signal that will trigger these two motors to go back to their normal position once they've moved onto this frame here. So it, it really is just that simple and it's so simple in fact that we're just going to change the frequency on this guy because I was doing a little bit of mucking around. And this guy. So if we want to go up, we just push one button, it goes up. Go down, it goes down. Just like that. I mean, that's the most simple form of the inchworm drive. It's a little bit on the compact side. I should point out also that I've got a temporary blue electric battery here spotted into place because this obviously is just a module. It doesn't have its own power plant. That would be a trick. If I could get a reliable power plant on something this size, I would be impressed. But no, that's not it. So then we come over here. Like I said, those are basically modules that you can then add the the form factor, the 3x4 frames with the one frame sticking out, the motors, the covers, the receivers, everything exactly the same, and then you just stick it on here somewhere with the only concern being you want to make sure that the blue electric cables are going to be connecting to something that will give blue electricity to these motors. In this case, I hooked it directly to the blue electric batteries that were visible on the side of the existing frame structure. As you can see, yeah. 
Similar to that, right? Just peeking out the side. They're not difficult to get to. And that becomes the up and down drive for this module. Up here, I had to get a little bit more creative to make the same sort of layout work. Mostly just to get the power to where I wanted it. But still, nothing crazy. Just had to add it on to one of these little fins, I guess you could call them, that we added. If you remember, we put these on just specifically so we would have something to grab onto those cables. So that's what this module got stuck to. Ended up being the same thing. So absolutely not compact. Um, definitely not even aesthetic that I would consider. But the goal here wasn't to do the absolute best possible version of this. The goal was to get a reasonably functional version. And it is functional. Actually, we can go like this. Same frequency as we had on the other one. And... Took a little time. Took a little time. I was afraid for a second there it wasn't going to work. So this goes up and down. One of the interesting things that I noticed with it when I was goofing around is that when I go up like this, it will send it all the way up to uh, connect with the upper module. It's waiting for it. Yeah, it was out of power. So now it's connected. But if I try and go down with it, it's stuck. The top unit is stuck to the bottom unit, which is not a big deal as long as we're aware of it because the goal with this is to have it controlled by red power 2 computer so we can have it set so that when when it goes up it's not a problem we basically we would do an inchworm drive system with this sort of being one motor and this being the other remember we're sort of treating this like its own inchworm drive with two motors facing each other now to give you an example um do i want to we're just going to change the frequency on these this is why i had them at the higher frequency before so that it was just one button on each. So if we go like this, it won't go anywhere because this guy here is in the way. So if we were to want, trying to get the unit to move down, we'll just uh, change these again. And this, we want it to go down so it would be 81, yes. Oh. Got the whole thing going. All right, so now that's reset. I know what you're thinking. I, I'm lost. I don't why I you had me un, until you started flipping these frequencies around. So it's just I want to disconnect them is basically what I want to do to illustrate the next point, and that will be on this frequency. So this is going to come up, and now they're detached. So if we wanted this thing to move up, we would move this up first, the top module up first. And then the bottom module, we would move second so that they were once again connected. If we wanted to move them down, we would move this module up. Then we would move this module down and this module down and this module down and this module down. So the first step to move down is actually to move this one up so that it disconnects from the bottom one. And you can move the bottom one down. Remember, we're trying to preserve the chunk loaders, not necessarily... Um, anything slick or elegant it's just the chunk loaders we have to keep those working properly so that's why we have to detach and the reason they're sticking together is because when they're in their rested state together these motors are contacting these panels that's why they're sticking so I mean it's it's not a big deal it's something that we could easily manage with an appropriate red power 2 routine which I'll show you we're gonna show you that in one of the episodes obviously because that's something that we have to cover so we can move up and down. Now, obviously, one of the issues when we start talking about mining vehicles using Red Power 2 frames is that if you use block breakers, like is very, very common in the single direction tunnel bore that you see, you're kind of restricted to one direction because of the nature of the way it works. If you try, think of this in your mind, put together a cube in your mind and put block breakers on every corner. You can't actually get all six faces covered with block breakers. You'll end up with two faces that are covered in block breakers and four faces that are missing block breakers along one edge because those are on the two faces that have all the block breakers. So you either have to do something really, really creative with sliding faces out and expanding them in order to make it work, or you have to come up with something that doesn't involve block breakers. The whole idea of the force field is it eliminates that need because the force field, you just basically, the miner is sitting there, the mega turtle, we'll call it the mega turtle, 
is sitting there, it erects the force field, any blocks that are contacted, or basically that are inside the force field walls, so to speak, are broken. You drop the force field, you move the miner, you raise the force field again, you break the next row, and repeat, on and on and on. So you move, turn on the force field, turn it off, move, turn on the force field, turn it off. Works awesome, as long as the vehicle can move with all the different force field components that you need, which you can't. You can't do it if you put any of the necessary force field blocks on a frame and then try and move that frame with motors, it doesn't move at all. It's basically as though it was glued to bedrock. So I kind of, for a second there, I was prepared to just say, okay, well, to hell with it for now, unless they update or something like that, we're just going to move on to another project, which would have been really disappointing and I think too quick to go that way. So I just want to kind of show you what I came up with in the interim that's going to keep this project going. And by the miracle of modern technology and stake, we're here back in my normal world. All the, the normal things, the normal portals, the normal chests, all that stuff. I just, in case I kind of didn't do a very good job of describing what I was talking about with the block breakers and having one missing from each edge. If you picture this as your mining machine and you've got, we'll pretend this is all one solid face and not missing four blocks in the middle. And these are all block breakers. And they're all facing in that direction. So the machine is going in this direction. It's just mining up a storm, chewing up all the blocks. That's great. That's awesome. But then if you come over to this side, what do you what do you do about here? Because you, you can't put block breakers here because if you put them here facing this way, then their side is going to be facing that way. And this part here is just going to run headlong into a wall. It'll break the 4x4 four four section of blocks in front of it, but then the strips of block breakers on either side is going to hold it up because they're facing to the side. They're not facing forward. So that's the dilemma with the block breakers. And like I say, that's where you have to either come up with something creative with the faces themselves and moving them out and extending them to cover all of the spaces necessary so that the vehicle itself can move through the hole that you're boring or you have to scrap the idea altogether and that's the same with the deployers and mining lasers idea that I had originally come up with to solve this whole shenanigan I would thought that maybe because we had such success with recharging the electric hose for the farming gantry we could do something with mining lasers and instead of having mining lasers facing straight forward on every possible block on each face we could have the ones one in from each edge in scatter mode so that they would mine a wider area and hopefully get that taken care of but then the thought occurred to me for even a 16 by 16 by 16 mining cube because the mega turtle it's got to be a cube how many mining lasers are you really going to put in that thing how many are you going to need to put in that thing plus you have to do the transposers thing to pick up everything and the scatter mode on the mining lasers is not only expensive in terms of energy it makes a damn mess like it's not a nice surgical scatter cut is just blah like crap all over the place so not really ideal so then I started considering other options and I ended up with this down here uh, which is a step in the right direction this is my relatively new Thomcraft workshop I do the magic stuff down here it took me four hours to do all the research and then another 45 minutes to an hour to get everything sort of built and set up, which was not horrible. I actually recorded the whole thing and then I thought, that's like four hours of spoilers. People would be kicking my ass if they started watching this video thinking it was about a mining turtle. And all of a sudden they're getting all these Thomcraft spoilers thrown in. So that saved 250 gigabytes on my hard drive. And now we can just talk about exactly what we're going to do. And we can do it with pictures. This guy. Now, I know I'm not the first person to conceive of using red power frames in conjunction with an arcane bore, multiple arcane bores, in order to do the kind of thing that I want to do with the Mega Turtle. I don't know if the other people who have done it are going to do it on the scale that I'm going to do it. This is not a cheap setup. It's not a cheap build at all. It requires about nine different shades of crazy, plus all this other stuff here. 
and stuff that goes in the crucibles and all that other stuff plus the stuff combined with the stuff to make stuff which we will eventually put onto a frame vehicle and hope that it doesn't just explode that's the, that's the goal if you haven't seen an arcane bore it's basically like uh, a mining laser a very cool looking green beam of death mining laser that mines a wider area than just the square directly in front of itself and it's clean it's a specific area it's like anywhere three by three up to i forget i didn't even do the math on how wide you can get it it says the default is five by five but i've seen it doing three by three so whatever it doesn't matter it's better than one by one which means we can put them on a mega turtle we don't have to worry about what's going on in the edges because we've got enough coverage that we can mine everything the vehicle will fit through everything will be fantastic that's not to say that we just put all this crap together on a crafting grid and make the thing and then hop on over to the miscraft age and start putting it together it's going to be a little while of putting this and all the other necessary components together that i want and then we can start thinking about exactly what it's going to do where and how but i can tell you the most likely outcome is that it's probably going to do a really good job of mining for about 15 minutes and then all the viz is going to be gone and we're going to be screwed. If everything works out the way I planned, that's not going to be so much of an issue, but you never know. You never know. We've got lots of room all the way around down here to set up whatever kind of facilities we need to produce the kind of stuff that we want in order to make the turtle a success, whether we need to have more crucibles, um, you know, gathering essentia and stuff with the things, and then plus the viz and the capacitors and the gems and the totems. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that we can do. I guess maybe the only downside is that, like I say, it's not going to be a fast process, which means we might have little filler episodes in between the Mega Turtle episodes because it might take me a little bit of time testing things to get them right before I show you guys because otherwise we're just doing a really crappy let's play where I'm doing things wrong for 20 minutes at a time maybe not so entertaining so I know this is a shorter episode than I even I was expecting considering what we could have been doing force fields but under the the circumstances like I said I was actually planning on having to scrap or scuttle the build for the time being until there were some changes to the mods to make them work together with the force field so we've got a solution in the works it's going to be magic. What we can't do with the technology, we will do with the magic. So the next episode will likely be some testing of an arcane bore. We've got all kinds of rock down here that we can shoot at. And uh, I can think of uh, less entertaining things to watch. So I hope you're as enthusiastic about it as I am. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, the easiest way to know when I add that video is to subscribe. So it tells you, hey, there's a new video. Check it out. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.